Hey everyone, I've got a list for you today. These are five things that I wish I had known as I got started with AWS. Hopefully they will save you some time, money, and potential security problems. First, let's talk about the AWS free tier. I think a lot of AWS beginners kind of freak out about the cost of AWS or potential cost, but there's the free tier that will get you really far. So just come out to aws.amazon.com slash free. You'll see there are three types of categories here. There are things where you can get free trials, things that are free for 12 months, and then things that are always free. And then scrolling down, you'll see the specific services. So for example, EC2 is 12 months free, and EC2 is where you create your virtual servers, but this doesn't apply to everything. It applies to T2 micro, T3 micro, those are types of VMs or types of instances. And as you're creating those instances, you'll get a note that this is eligible for the free tier. So you should be good to go just to do basic computing for 12 months. And the same is true for these other core services like storage with S3, the relational database service, and so on. You can also filter over here. So maybe you just want to look at databases, for example, a lot of different options here. So make sure you read the fine print, but this should be more than enough to get you started. Next, make sure you set up an AWS budget. This could potentially save you hundreds or even thousands of dollars if you accidentally leave something running. It's happened to all of us, it's definitely happened to me, and it's a terrible, terrible feeling when it does. An AWS budget is where you say, I wanna spend $10 a month, let's say. And so if you go over that amount, you'll get notified so you can come and check that you didn't leave something running. Pretty easy to set up, just in the console here. Go to budgets. I do already have one created, but you can create as many as you want. So let me walk you through this. Create a budget. We're going to keep things simple and use a template. And you want to go with the monthly cost budget. And then scrolling down, fill out those details. You can change the name if you want. Enter the monthly amount. Let's say $10. And then enter the email address of who should be notified if you're spending too much money. And then down here, you'll see you actually get notified when your actual spend reaches 85% of that. So in our case, $8.50. You'll also be notified when your actual spend reaches 100%, and if your forecasted spend is expected to reach 100%. So lots of guardrails here to keep you within your budget. And then scrolling down, just say Create Budget. Perfect. So now as you're going about and kind of playing with things and learning AWS, if you start approaching that $10, you'll get a notification. Related to money, you definitely need to understand Cost Explorer. This is where you can view the details of your charges. Back to the console, if you're already in Billing and Cost Management, Cost Explorer is actually here on the left-hand navigation, or you can also just type it in to the search box up here to get there. But I'll come into Cost Explorer. I do have a full video on Cost Explorer, link above and below if you want more details, but I'll just give you a really quick high-level overview here. So over on the right, I've got a date range selected from July 1st to the end of December. And you'll see my spend here in the middle. If you hover over any of these bars, you get a breakdown of the different services. So I've got a domain name with the registrar that was $13 this month. I've got some taxes, some other things, but you can hover over all of these to see the breakdown. And then over here on the right, you can also do grouping and filters and so on. So right now, I've got it grouping by service, which is what we see there in the middle. And then you can also choose a particular service. So let's say I only want to look at EC2 instances. I'll select that and apply. And then scrolling down, you'll see the instances here. Not a whole lot. You scroll down even more, you actually get a breakdown, in my case, by month, but you can also get this by day as well, depending on your granularity. You can do things like filtering on a particular region, if you work in multiple regions, by instance type, usage type, and so on. But as you start accumulating charges as you're working in AWS, you'll definitely want to come in here and see where those charges are coming from, especially if you weren't expecting one. All right, the next thing you really want to do as you get started is set up multi-factor authentication or MFA 
for your root account. Your root account is set up automatically for you when you create your AWS account and when you first log in, you are logged in as the root user. The root account is all powerful, it can do everything, which is nice, but also a huge security concern if something gets compromised. So you definitely want to set up MFA for this account. To do that, you'll want to come into Identity and Access Management, or IAM. Now, I already have MFA set up for the root, and I am logged in as root right now as well. But this won't be true if you have a new account. So what you want to do is over here on the right, under Quick Links, there's a link to My Security Credentials. And then down here in the Multi-Factor Authentication section, say Assign MFA Device. I'll just call this my test device. I'm not going to go all the way through with this, but I'll get you started. And there are three options for you. You can use an Authenticator app on your phone, like Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticate, or other apps as well. Or if you have a hardware key, like a YubiKey, for example, something that you plug into your computer, you can set that up here as well. But let's just say we wanted to go with the Authenticator app. Click on Next, and it'll give you instructions on what to do. For example, install Google Authenticator on your phone. You would open up that app and then say, show the QR code here. You would scan that from your app, get everything set up, enter some codes down here, and then you're off and running. So definitely do this for your root account. But speaking of the root account, you actually don't want to be using that for your everyday work. So set up your MFA, but after that, you kind of don't want to use it unless you absolutely need to. So thinking of the principle of least privilege, you want to be working in an account that doesn't have more permissions than you need. A lot of times as you're doing development, though, you will need some administrative access. So it's common to set up an admin user in IAM. Let me show you how to do that. So let's back up to the IAM dashboard here and then click on Users. We'll create a new user and give it a name. I'll just call it my IAM admin. You probably do want access to the management console. And when you go to set up this access, you'll get a message about Identity Center. AWS is kind of nudging us all towards Identity Center. I've got some videos that I'll link for that as well. But just to keep things simple, let's say that we want to just create a regular IAM user. We'll leave Identity Center out of it for now. And then you can set up your password, either auto-generated or custom. I'll just go with custom. And then you've got options around having the user create a new password. That is recommended. I'll just deselect it for now. And we'll go next. And then because this is an admin user, you want to make sure they have administrator access. Now, previously, I had created a group called admins. But if you don't have that group yet, you can create a new one here. Pretty easy to do. I'll call it my test admin group. And then you need to give it permissions. Permissions are governed by policies. And at the very top here, we have administrator access. So click on that one. Create user group. And this will take you back to the create user flow that we were going through. So now you could just select the my test admin group here and say next and create your user. Okay, the user was created successfully. Here you've got the login to the console. You've got the username, and then you can also show the password. You could email these sign-in instructions to the user or to yourself, and then you can also download these details as well. So for your everyday work going forward, you would want to log in as this user and not use your root account. Okay, and those are my five tips that you must know as a beginner. If you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up. Also, think about subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.